So our next uh, speaker today comes to us from sunny California, uh, Desi Cataluna. And I've had the pleasure of hearing her speak before uh, at a Worklight Story Night. I think that was about nine months ago. Um, that was hosted by our, uh, our Fresno and Gilroy chapters out in California. Um, and, and Desi is, is just an amazing woman, amazing Christian. Um, she's a fourth grade teacher at the Oak Grove Elementary School District in San Jose, California. And she'll be sharing a really inspiring story today that takes us through her experiences in developing a closer relationship with Jesus amidst workplace and relationship challenges. Um, the topic of this is a love story. And uh, just to ground us in a, a little bit of scripture, there's a Old Testament and a New Testament passage that knowing Desi, um, uh, I, I'm confident will help ground us in some of what we'll hear from her in just a moment. So from Proverbs chapter three, verses three through six, reminds us, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. And then jumping forward to uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 through 9. And again, I just I love the way that this, this scripture, in a few moments you'll hear come to life in Desi's, uh, Desi's love story with Jesus. 1 John 4, uh, chapter, 5, chapter 4, pardon me, verses 15 through 19. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. In this way, love is complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. So Desi, really excited to hear your story in just a moment here. What a profound reminder that we love because he first loved us. And I'm um, really excited to hear what you have to share with us today, Desi. God bless you, and we'll see everyone back here after the talk. Hi, everyone. Greetings from, Greetings Gilroy. from Gilroy, and second welcome to the second day of our Work Light Annual Conference 2021. 2021. My journey, a love My journey, story. a love story. I was given the scripture. I was the given the, the well. scripture, the woman at the well, to present my story to you today. My love story, reflecting from the woman at the well, has four phases. The first phase is honesty. The second phase is surrender. The third phase is trust in the Lord. And the fourth phase is life with the Holy Spirit, spreading the good news. Before I begin, let us say a very short prayer. Lord Jesus, open my eyes to the times you have reached out to me and loved me. Amen. My reflection on the woman at the well from John chapter four, one through 42. The woman at the well, can this be me? Was there a time when I felt heartbroken and struggling to define love? Like the story of the woman at the well and meeting Jesus, I do see myself. But this love story is one where I, a woman at the well met Jesus through former women at the well. Yes, I met and befriended Jesus through women who were once lost and now found, 
who were once angry and now spread joy, and who were once pretentious and materialistic, and who now strut with rigorous honesty, releasing God's goodness like sweet perfume. My reflection on the woman at the well. Phase one of my journey, the theme, honesty. Being honest with myself. I looked okay, but I felt downtrodden, fearful, and sad. It took rigorous honesty to admit that I was not okay. Let me continue. I was working and enjoying my profession and living an okay life, but the center of my soul was hurting. And let me explain why very briefly. I am just not one of the fortunate ones who has a trauma-free childhood. I had a traumatic experience that impacted my whole life. So, you know, I believe I was living under that shadow of being okay with that hurting soul. Don't let the fear about your future consume your life. Just live for now and the right things will fall into place was my mantra. And I found out how temporary that was. And as it says here, how meaningless it was to me when I became rigorously honest about my situation. my journey, the theme is surrendering. Wow, this is a huge thing. It doesn't happen overnight. Surrendering. I needed help, sought comfort, and a former woman at the well invited me to a CIC work light meeting. I still remember my first meeting, meeting all these women with these joyful faces and I was scared and I think they knew it too but they welcomed me and even to this day they love me unconditionally but that was the next phase surrendering to the Lord God with with the strength that I saw and felt from the former women at the well in these small CIC groups, these work light prayer groups. Phase three, after surrendering, which is quite a period of time, and we continually surrender, even, even at this phase in my life. Phase three is trust in the Lord. My commitment to establish this trust was the beginning of opening up myself to him. So just like surrendering, now there's that established trust. Do you really believe he, Jesus, will help you, that God will guide you. Do you really believe that? So this trust in the Lord is that huge commitment. And it was scary confronting my demons. But as I addressed concerns of the workplace, which is CIC Work Life's mission, I began to feel more confident, brave, and making my actions pleasing, not to me, not to my friends, not to my family, but to my creator, confident, brave, and pleasing to God in the workplace, in my home and family, in my community, and especially in my soul that was once hurting. Confident, brave, and pleasing to God brought peace and love. And yes, there was an aspect of forgiveness in this huge phase of trusting in the Lord. Phase three, trust in the Lord, is 
a continuous practice, I would say. So, and it meant work. I didn't just sit and wait for Jesus. Worklight offered me surmounting opportunities to establish this trust. There were scripture readings, reflections from the newsletter, um, prayer meetings, retreats and conferences like the one you're attending now. There's music and prayer, prayer lines where if somebody really needed a prayer, we were able to easily reach out to our, our group, our sisters, to hold us and to keep this trust in the Lord going. Phase three of my journey, trust in the Lord. So this new phase in my life and my love story, trust in the Lord, is a very, very important step. And once this trust is established, and you've got to feel it's established in a strong, undying way in your heart, this life's journey seems holy, loving, and fun. Let's go out and spread his presence. My heart would rejoice, just like the woman at the well. Yes, Jesus is always with me. And look at how many sisters, former women at the well, are always there to help me throughout my journey. And we do this all for the glory of our Lord. Phase four is life with the Holy Spirit. And as I continue to grow spiritually, my trust in the Lord through work life has led me to include the Holy Spirit in all I do. I have to admit, when I look back, this aspect of the Holy Spirit is like woven in all these phases from the very beginning, it just gets stronger and stronger. And these spiritual gifts, you probably are aware that you have some of these spiritual gifts. Everyone has these spiritual gifts. So this journey, life of the Holy Spirit, brings us to the point where we want to spread the good news. The Holy Spirit, is my ultimate guide in this confusing world. Jesus will always be my center and my Holy Spirit will always be my guide. And we've got to spread the good news about this. The power of the Holy Spirit is essential. It's essential in my love story. So life with the Holy Spirit continues on when strongly connected to God and his virtues one begins to look at everyone as part of God's huge family that we ultimately are all God's children so we extend this joy to all whom we meet Christians non-Christians all whom we meet brothers and sisters in God's glorious name everywhere and here I am, and as some of you know that I did teach in the United Arab Emirates, and wow, that was such a rewarding experience. It heightened my spirituality, and I, I truly believe that we were all children of God. Here I see my colleagues, my current colleagues, my former colleagues, my friends from high school, all everyone you meet in this life with the Holy Spirit becomes a peaceful acceptance. We are all his children and we are all brothers and sisters in God's glorious name. I hope and pray that you see Jesus in your life as I did 
listening to some songs of faith. I think the woman at the well sang her heart out after recognizing her beloved Savior. Did she instill his power of love and presence of peace in her life and turn more to goodness in her life? I believe the answer is yes. Now, I invite you to say yes to Jesus' calling. Yes, Jesus. Come. Come into my life. Your life will be filled with his blessings. After my presentation, let us open our hearts to listen and share among ourselves these questions. Where was Jesus in your troubled life? What helped shed that light to help you untangle the knots of worries and repeated sins of your past? Who did Jesus use as a tool to bring you back home? to fill you with his love and joy again. Now that I'm ending my love story, let me assert to you, look and listen. Jesus is there. He's here. Just need to look and listen. Listen with your heart. I sent my peace and love to each and every one of you. That you find Jesus in your life, in your love story. Our own love story, but perhaps consider where the edges of our current decisions might be able to lean a little further into what God has in store for us, a little closer to the actions that we're getting nudged towards in our life. And I, I love that simple reminder to say yes, not just, yeah, but yes to Jesus calling. Um, and it, it reminds me of a simple little turn of phrase that, that we'll talk about a little later today, which was obvious, I think, Desi, in your talk. Um, God's word creates our work. God's word leads to our work. God's word guides our work. And so this powerful gift of scripture that God gives us is full of guidance, of direction, and of ways for us to get to work. Um, thanks be to God for all of that, uh, to help guide us in this life, to be builders of his kingdom in the workplace.